Hey, welcome back everybody in YouTube land. Now I haven't done this before, but I have a buddy that's looking for one. So I was doing a video, want to do a video on what to look for when I'm buying a new ATV. Now, just because it's got a lot of hours on it, don't mean that it's done. Take this for instance. This is a 2001, or old, this is a 2001 Kawasaki Prairie. 400 Now this guy is taking care of this. I have one's been changing the oil on it for him uh, I've done some repairs. You probably see it on my video. I'm Put doing all the different repairs on this one But this is been always garage kept um, It's the only thing it had to you know certain things, but it's been taken care of and look at the miles on this thing This thing has 7,217 miles. That's a lot of miles. But as you can look at it, it's not hard miles. You know, somebody hasn't beat this thing to pick. Wrote it like they stole it, you know? They have not done that. This, uh, he's had this, I think, since new. I'm not for sure. He just put some new tires on it. Him and his wife use this. And as you see, he's got carriers for his dogs, so he takes his dogs around on the farm. So it's used on a farm. And uh, it just needed minor stuff on this to get it going. So just because it's old, just because it's got a lot of miles, don't mean it's not going to be a good four-wheeler. Now, what's things to look for? Well, first of all, you want to shake this. See how that that's tight there's nothing moving this here nothing moving you can use this nothing moving it's it's in good shape check the other side move the tire back and forth you know try the steering wheel that'll tell you if your bearings are good this is a four-wheel drive model so that'll be good to see if your your bearings are good now on some of this one here is as you can see is a solid axle so again check it for if the bearings are are wore on it or anything like that now sometimes on these kind on the axles like this that there's a nut in the middle here and that can be loose and you can get some movement from there so you almost have to look right here when you move this to make sure that it, you know, sideways, sideways, it's not moving in there. And another thing it can tell you too is leakage. If you have a lot of leaky oil here seeping, and what happens is, you know, eventually it all drains out and it dies. You know, of course, it's going to kill the rear end part of there. This one's got disc brake, not disc, I'm sorry, drum brakes in the back. And here's to tell you if they work, okay? And see how this is right there? It's not coming out much? That says that these brakes are in good shape. They're generally at the top, as long as nobody's tampered with this and it does look like, doesn't look like anybody tampered with it. And here, this is just a box that goes on back there. But that's things to look for. Now, you check the brakes. Now this is automatic. You want to make sure it shifts good. And when you start it, see how well it starts and idles. This one idles beautiful. No problem. Didn't even choke it. Now you hear a little sound coming from it. Hear that? That is from the clutch. Now that clutch is starting to get a little loose, but it works fine. You know, 7,000 miles on it, and the clutch makes a little noise. Now eventually that clutch is probably going to have to be replaced. Rev it up. Look out back. Make sure there's no blue smoke coming out. You know, rev it up. You know, look out the back. Make sure there's no blue smoke. Let's go ahead and shut it off. And what you want to do is drive it, get it out, and just, uh, you know, a safe area and punch the thing. See how well it accelerates. 
how what it does. Make sure there's no hesitation. That'll tell you how good the engine, what's going on in the engine. You always want to come over here. If I can get it off there, check the oil. Make sure there's. That's before you take off, but make sure there's oil in there. You know, this is good clean oil. You can smell it, smell it, and how gassy it smells. That smells like oil, so that's in good shape. Like I should expect that this is well taken care of. So this, some of those are some of the things to check. Uh, this here, if this is loose, you can look underneath here. Sometimes it's a tie rod that's loose. And that's a pretty inexpensive thing to fix. Uh, now, if this was independent suspension, if you've seen them before, independent suspension, you'd want to check to make sure that the boots are in good shape. Like on this one here. See, this one's a full front four-wheel drive. This is the one I took off of it. See how it's cracked there? But see, you can see if it's straight, it might not even look like it is cracked. So check them closely. But you can see a little dark how dark it is than here. This is light. See this one, how this one is? That's a little darker, even when it's straight, see that? So check that out. Make sure you ain't got no broken uh, boots because it don't take long for the dirt to get in there to mess up these CVs and they start clicking. Now that's another story, clicking. When you turn this thing, turn it hard and you know, and, and turn, one way, listen. Do you hear any clicking? Any ticking? Do it the other way. You hear any clicking coming from the back or the front? That's if it's independent. And let me go show you independent, what I'm talking about. Over here. This is on my 850. See, that's independent suspension. So you have four boots back here to look for. Now, what you want to do, too, is try to pull on this to check to make sure these are not wore out, the bushings in these. On uh, some of the Polaris, those tend to go out because people don't grease them. If people would grease these things, they'd never go out. But people for don't re grease them. I don't know why. Now, if you do this again here, you can uh, feel if these bearings, which would be that outer bearing there, could be bad. So on independent ones, you got eight, eight CVs to look at. So check them out and see. So then you can weigh the cost about what it would cost to get them fixed. You know, an axle is 60 to 80 bucks. You can buy a whole axle and, you know, my, um, you can look at my YouTube channel and, uh, show you how to do it <laughs> how to easily change that out all right this is just some of the things to look for uh, generally if the plastics are in good shape as you can see on this one the plastics are in good shape and it's together it's generally been taken care of or put in the shed and taken care of and somebody loved that four wheeler <laughs> didn't abuse it now like this one here this one's pretty it's it's pretty rough you know, it's been abused in a little bit in its life, but I mean, a mechanical, but the plastics are kind of beat up and kind of been patched together. But it's still a good four because of the Yamaha. I mean, it still runs good and, and does, does its job, but this is a prime example of an older four wheeler that's in excellent condition. And if I was you, I would have no problem buying one just like this. So. That's just some of the things I've come up to look at and, uh, you know, check to see if it has a winch, see if it works. Uh, that's not a bake or break deal. But you got to weigh the price and if there is some small things that you might want to negotiate on the price. So then you could fix those. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you uh, find a good four-wheeler and what to look for. And if I seek up, think up some other things that I come along the way, I might add another video. But hey, thanks for watching. 
as always, take care, have a good day. Because every day you're up and walking is a good day. Take care. Don't you want